exciting event. Burning Man this year. There's a super, super interesting... Uh, too bad we don't have Dick Masterson here. He's, he's a big Burning Man guy. He goes every year. Uh, maybe he saw this. Apparently, they have big fires at Burning Man where they burn w- wicker men. And Giant. this gentleman, I would assume he's on MDMA. There's a picture of him running uh, in in the article there. And he just ran right into the fire. And wow. he burned to death at Burning Man. That gives Man. totally new meaning to the spirit molecule, right? Molecule, right? Like, like he just he just burnt up and and went away. Like that's honestly that's that, that's a great way to go if you're that kind of person. Burning well, alive for me was is like, one of my least favorite ways to go. Uh, I, I, he didn't I, feel a thing. I mean, I mean, Maybe. I, I want to be sensitive. <laughs> I want to be sensitive a little bit because uh, you know, a person actually died here. Uh, like, but at the same time, I mean, he didn't just go to Burning Man; he became Burning Man, <laughs> and like he went all in. Like, and he was probably telling people on the way up, like, "Yo, I'm not just going to Burning Man this year. I am Burning Man this year." He may have done, and there are going to be a lot of tasteless graphic tees sold at Burning Man <laughs> next year. Picturing that silhouette of the guy, you know, running in or maybe sell, on fire. Do they sell things there? I, I was under the impression that it's like all an intense barter system there. I have, yeah. I've never been. I have no idea. That would. Yeah, I, I was under the impression that like money is no good there, but people bring their goods and and people have like very specific skills, and many, they'll do those skills in exchange for like uh, drugs or food. I, I like this. Right. How many whippets does it cost to get a blowjob? That's what I want to know. I mean, you need to make sure she's still it's, conscious it's, at it's, the end of it. It's the other. It's the other <laughs> way around, jumping? actually. It's actually like, whose dick do I gotta suck for a whip it? Well, actually, that's the same. Isn't like it? that's that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's two sides of the same coin. I'm the guy with the tank of whip it. <laughs> yeah, it's the flip side. I'm like, the dick you've got to suck. Like, like, <laughs> if, you, if you go with seventeen hundred, you know, whip it's being like, I hope I get seventeen blowjobs. Like, no, you'll probably get seventeen hundred blowjobs. Like a blowjob. Per whip it like you're good there. You're a god. I I don't know anything about burning. You have to be I a just assume if you bring a thousand whip it, you get a thousand blowjobs. Blow jobs. Re- like what? I don't mean to expose my age, but a couple blowjobs in, and I'm really satiated. We're good here. Yeah, no, when I, I get I, to I, like number nine. I'm just gonna. I'm like, thanks for trying. Like we're done here for the day. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm getting chased. Like my my dick looks no, like no. I'm just like I'm like I want to like you know what check. you know what Who just. Needs- just breathe on it while it's soft. Then just just breathe on it. That's <laughs> fine. It's all wrong. You're cons- you're thinking that you're gonna go to completion with each one of these many women, but there's not mm. time for that. I mean, a whip it lasts like ten seconds. Oh, there's time. A blowjob lasts like ten seconds. So you're getting like ten seconds of a blow from each girl. You're maximizing your numbers here. You may be no. guaranteed an that's, STD. That's yeah, but I was about to say that's good because I was worried I wouldn't have an STD at the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> God, <laughs> I really lock that in. Uh, Kyle, that's Did, like. Can no, you imagine the? F- festering wet dick you would have 11 girls into this burning man fiasco yes, like these I, girls no. i assume didn't brush their teeth that morning mm. or or anything like that and and i was thinking about the bartering system it, i bet if cash is good for anything there it's just good for drugs like it's all and like water. bartering like hey man like you give me like a sprite and i'll give you half of this ham sandwich and they're like yeah i mean like we all just work at our core competencies you know this is how things should work you have any pot yeah that's gonna be uh 70 uh, uh for an eighth <laughs> yeah i'm sorry it's no, really no, expensive no. See, here because, I, I, uh, because i feel I'm like drug dealer. i feel <laughs> like the drug it's got to be a crazier drug like like pot is just like yeah man pass it around but like it's the other it's stuff like, it's the old man MDMA. drug where it's like do you know how much this shit cost me <laughs> like drop the fucking Burning Man gig for a second here. You know how much this shit costs, bro? And you just <laughs> dropped it on the floor. You owe me a hundred bucks. So what drug do you it think this guy was on serious. to run into? So, so I've just seen images of this oh. stuff. Like like you, I know very little about Burning Man. It always seemed very odd to me. I, I what? But, but the images I see are always like festival chicks who are like naked or body painted, and that's always attractive. Or yes. It's those gigantic wicker men that they've built. And by gigantic, it, I mean it, 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 75 it, to me, feet tall. To, to me, Burning Man has looked like, uh, from pictures and stuff, it's looked like Mad Max, a triple X porn parody. Yes. And, and that's yes. what it looks like for me just looking at pictures. And then the things that I hear. Uh, I mean, the last time I was on, we were talking about like the cougar tent, right? There's a tent where you go fuck a cougar, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. So, I mean, like, I, I don't know. These, I only hear these legends and stuff like that. And, uh, I, I, so at that, that SIV course, that paramotor or paragliding thing I took where they teach you to do acrobatics, the people there 
never miss a Burning Man. They were talking about it. It was like coming up or happening or something. And uh, they were, the guys were like, yeah, Burning Man is so easy to get laid. Like everybody's getting laid at this thing. And I was like, like I, I just don't buy it. Like there's no world in which women freely have sex with anybody. And they're like, Burning Man is that world. And uh, I feel like I, I feel like at the same, I feel like at the same yeah, time, though, Woody. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like at the same it's called time, Tinder. fun world. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was like, like it, you know, like it's just not that easy to get that many hot girls to fuck you. And they were what like, you've oh, been out of the game a little while. I, I know, I know, but, but, but they're still going. And they're like, yeah, well, you know what? They don't have to be hot. No, stay in your weight class, <laughs> and, and, and you'll get some action. And I was like, oh. stay in your weight. Class. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, like you know, just you know where you are. If you're seven, stop eight minute tens. You're gonna miss. Oh, I thought you meant I should look for other 200-pound girls. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you weigh? Fucking perfect. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I've thought of a great thing to do. I've never gone to Burning Man, and it doesn't seem like my jam, really. But if I did ever go, I would do the whip it thing where you buy a tank. But I would buy a tank of helium and put a GoPro on my chest <laughs> and give it to people for free. And see how many people I could dupe into pretending to be high, or people who just love or are addicted to whippets, and they're like, "Oh, thanks a lot, man." What did you even give me here? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like I gave you helium, idiot. And that's a, an element that we're running out of. So this joke is expensive. You know, in the long run. <laughs> There's a cap on that. Yeah, absolutely. Same thing with silver. Yeah, we. I th I'm pretty sure that we've mined like all the silver there is. How can we know that? I don't know. That is a good point. That's just the thing. <laughs> that's the thing we don't get to know. We haven't even drilled through our own earth, you know. Yeah, well, we, like, we, we we got shit that we don't. We got valuable shit, maybe that we don't even know about that we're like sitting right on top of. Or stuff that we just don't know how to use yet. Like every time I hear like, "Oh, we're out of silver, or we're out of oil, or we found all the gold that it's not on asteroids," it's like, yeah, but like, who's deciding this? Like some dude who owns a fuck ton of gold, and he's like, "All right, all right, that's enough. I think I think we found all the if gold." If there's anything I've learned like, from reality TV, there's still more gold out there. Yes, little tiny flakes to be hunted by toothless men in, in Oregon. Alaska. Yeah, but I'm yeah, very Alaska. into it. I, I who have to enough. subsidize their gold business by bringing a TV crew in. That is yep. also true. But there are other people who aren't subsidizing their business. They say. Yeah, those guys are going out of business, though, right? I, I guarantee <laughs> yeah. the guys who. The guys who don't have a TV crew to watch them sit there and like dig for gold, they're like, "Fuck, there's no way to make it in the actual gold business. You gotta have a, you gotta have an audience for this shit. It just, this is performance art. This is not real <laughs> mining." Like, I'm I, a I seventh just... generation gold miner, and my family probably should have stopped this about four generations ago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got into plumbing or something. Yeah, <laughs> that would have uh, been much better than like, hunting for gold. And can you imagine? Like going to a bar in a local area there, and you're all dirty, and you got shiny tipped fingers or whatever, and you have to explain to a girl like, "Oh no, I, I hunt for gold for a living." Like, how long are those conversations gonna go? Well, are you good at it? Well, I just ordered a Bud Select because they're two dollars. So no. <laughs> Wait, like, <laughs> why does he have shiny tipped fingers in this scenario? Because he's been he's been poking around gold dust all day. So you're saying his 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 fingers are covered with gold? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, he's not back good in, at this. Back in the gold, gold days, fingertip. Back in olden days, they used to leave slits in the floor of those places so that when the people who mined went in, they'd obviously have gold little tiny flecks stuck on them. They'd sit down to drink, and the little flecks would fall through the floor into pans or, or dishes, and then the owners of, or the proprietors, because it's olden days, right. of the bars would go under there and get it. So that's a real the, thing. The other thing that they would do is, like, you would pay for one thing, like a shave, or you would pay for a whore, and... Free, like along with that, would be like a shower. Like they would give, like wash your hair or whatever. And they're like, oh, well, I get a whore for a dollar and, and I get a bath for free. I'm sold. But they were really like bathing these guys to collect the gold dust from their hair. So they're, you know, collecting that out of there. But you're right. The, the slits in the floorboard thing was totally true, too, because they would pay with pinches of gold dust. And, you know, there's no way to like not spill a little every time you buy something with a pinch yeah. of fucking gold dust. Can you imagine if like that was our mode of currency today? for Canadians. So, here's the deal. I've always been impressed by how OP automotive HVAC systems are, right? I could wear winter clothes in the summertime and the car's air conditioning is so cool, you'll pull it off, right? It'll eventually get cold. And then in the winter, I could wear shorts and a t-shirt. Now, if you're from Canada and it gets to be like, I don't know, negative 20 Celsius or something, whatever it is, crazy system you people use, 
Can the H? Can the heat let like get? Does it get warm? Do you get your car like hot when it's that cold out? When you uh, start your day, like when I started my day growing up, mm -hmm. I'd wake up and I'd put on a bathrobe and I'd put on my boots and I'd run out to my car and like. Honestly, like sometimes literally the door is frozen or your handle is frozen. Yep. And uh, I'd get in and I'd turn the car on, turn on the defrosters, all of them, and blast the heat. And then I'd go inside and shower and change and like pack my bag. And when I come back out, the ice, at least visually, is melted and the windows are clear. And I might have some brushing to do. And uh, yeah, it's like hot in there that you wear a t shirt. Oh, yeah. Like you I wear a t shirt like crap. It's awesome. Crack, crack a window or something. You small know? space. Yeah, I, um, and they they have a lot of like they have to overcome, right? They're not just maintaining, so that's why. Remote they're... start is the way to go, man. Like, yes. like, well, like now, yeah. But I just remember when I was younger, that just wasn't an option for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. It's just that that's so nice to like because I've done that so many times. What you're describing, like like run out there in the in your underwear, often just, ah, 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 you just start the car and then sprint back. It's in. the like, worst. God, damn it! Was it's that even horrible. worth it? Have you guys and, and tried air conditioned well, seats yet? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we, yeah, I have I have those I, I in my truck. I don't care for it. I'm <laughs> a big fan. It's, it's so if people don't know, probably most people do they don't drive 15-year-old cars, but um they have seats now, like leather seats that are like air hockey tables and they just blow sometimes car air in there and sometimes air conditioned air uh at your shorts and it's I only had it in a rental and it was glorious. Yeah, they've had those since 2005. I remember. Uh, makes your butt feel yeah. wet. Yeah, we don't have yes, any it does. cars that makes new. it feel wet and cold. <laughs> Which is why I don't like it. Wet. Really? Yeah, I like any. The seat has like these like uh, perforations, makes... blast cold air. Mm -hmm. Just give me a moist feeling. It doesn't make. Yeah, Woody's feel right like in the description of powdered, uh, powdered. Like it's not. No, I like. I know what you're talking about the the air hockey thing. Like the slight like little perforations of, of cold air. The perforations. I I know what Harley's saying. I think it feels more wet. Like I sat on a wet towel and then stood up and then sat back down again before my you know jeans dried or something. It's like oh well, damn. Honestly, it. that's just because you got wet ass from being out in the hot and all of a sudden and the air has cooled the wet ass down and you're feeling it. Mm -hmm. And that's all that's going on there. Yeah, yeah, it could the be. The AC is just like it's it's cooling down your sweat, your sweaty yeah, you, butt. Yeah, you got swamp ass. Well, does the AC dry that makes your sense. ass? That's what I want. I want like a cool air hair dryer. On my rear end as I drive around. So nah, like, like like an air bidet. Like nah. That's yes. Not you just want a bidet in your front seat. In it's your just car. one big jet of air just <laughs> right up your ass. Just a hair dryer down. That, that's I love getting in the car and you're like really sweaty dusty. and and you funnel like the uh, the AC like up a sleeve or up your pants leg or something. Oh, like especially oh. up to like your shorts leg Both and it's just like it just hits your balls and junk oh. and everything and it's just the it's the greatest feeling ever. I, I wish that there were pants like a whole tracksuit that you could like plug a thing into in your car just, <laughs> <laughs> they make that for your bed all right they, yes. I, I would i saw it advertised on cnn it's one of those products they like pitch toward like old retired couples for sure like along with the recline the beds that are six thousand dollars and all that shit and it's like you have this air conditioner that hooks up to your bed or heater and it like inflates the the blanket and like ke keeps like cold air blowing in there and you can get like a single uh temperature one or you can like dual climate control that bitch like a car <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, you want to stay warm up here but your lower half's dying no no no, no for your cold. wife so your wife yeah, can get like super cold and, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> silly murka puts it on sideways <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> My feet are fucking uh, freezing. <laughs> I, I would want to know that thing is working for ten years without starting a fire while people are sleeping before I can right. Get to it. Mm, yeah, I hear I, you. I, like I, I don't want to be the person that burns in my bed using that thing, and they're like, "Oh yeah, they took it off the shelves." Yeah, you don't want to be the it, one who had to die for that. You don't want to well, be like the patient Christ zero. The it's a yet. unit that sits on the floor with ducting that connects to your bed, so yeah, you, it would burn. I guess it would start the fire under the bed for maximum efficiency. I take it I've all back. I jerry rigged that <laughs> system up myself. Like, like there's an air vent right next to my bed, and if I just like throw the blanket over there just right, it's like mm. it's so nice. Like it, when when that cold air, like like the full blast of the vent, and it's you know it's super inefficient because I just kind of toss a blanket over it. But just just that alone on a hot summer's night is is just real real nice. Like, air conditioning is the greatest fucking thing. Make sure I remember like. 
it might have been Sean Hannity or somebody who they, they were they were making this statement about capitalism or meritocracy or something like that, and they brought up like the guy who invented the air conditioner, oh. and like and like when he first invented it, like everybody was like. <sighs> Cooling the air? Who would buy such a stupid thing? And like, <laughs> he'd, like, he'd like raise the money himself and get investors and stuff because like no company would like like go with the idea. It was this, this whole thing? It's Can like you like, imagine it's, how it's, fucking sweaty it's, and stinky all the people were making fun of his invention as they just fans. smelled like shit. Like no with one's ever whole, gonna need that. Do they, we just carry one handkerchief and wipe ourselves? You know, it's disgusting. Oh, it's Captain Woody. Yeah, with the with those old school like metal fans just spinning so slow you can count the blades. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that. That wasn't that long ago. That's what our grandparents were dealing with. Imagine what our grandchildren will deal with. My grandparents have complained to me about how hot it was shitting in the southern Missouri summer in <laughs> a wooden outhouse. And so they just sat in their wooden outhouse and would take a shit as a kid at night. And she, my grandma's always like, and I was always so scared to go out there at night because cause my dad said snakes live in that hole that you're pooping in. And I, I always believed him. It turns out he was joking, mostly. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> Am I the only one who's shocked that oral sex was even a thing in an era before air conditioning? Can you imagine how gross, mm. how gross oral sex was before the advent of air conditioning? Uh, it had to be, have been just like, just like mainly like a po just post bathe. You know, like when you're just oh you, you know. yeah that bit that that buck that bowl of water it, over there on the countertop yeah let me let me freshen up over here in the <laughs> bowl of water. <laughs> I wonder. Well, you know, I, I I'd say that the downside of it is uh my for me is a little bit more specific in that like uh you know sweaty blowjobs should be appreciated as their own category and back then all blowjobs were sweaty blowjobs so there was no way to differentiate you know. Like yeah. there was no way to be like, ooh, you're going in on it now. You're bad. <laughs> but like back, like back then, it was just like you're licking my ass. Oh my god, you are hardcore. Yeah, oh, at least I now. really appreciate least, you, but I don't now. want to kiss you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Can, can you imagine a rim job before fuck 1940? Like, <laughs> like that's horrible to imagine. That cost a whole silver dollar. Goddamn it! Like you had to pay up. That they was the one thing. Those, those, no uh, algorithms, no yeah. paper money. She was going <laughs> to bite that coin when you gave it to her if she's going to give you a rim job in 1909. Yeah, I bet that was expensive as shit to get with those prostitutes in Vietnam. Because you're just sweaty and horrible. Or actually, eh, they lived in know. Vietnam, so they didn't yeah. have AC. So they I just. Feel like, I, I'm I happy feel you're like not sweating curry out. Vietnamese that children a, always work Harley's cheap. point. I feel like if you were trying to get uh, 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 an escort or a prostitute, to eat your butt like 80 years ago and he propositioned her i feel like right away she's gonna be like i'm calling the police <laughs> <laughs> i'm calling the constable <laughs> yeah. already playing close to, like they would they'd burn you already asked like me to lick his fanny you know? <laughs> <laughs> some guys found like some spanish doubloons or something off the coast of florida and like waist deep water or something like that and i, and I don't remember the the figures but it was like 20 million dollars worth of gold or some shit and they immediately go to the government, and they're like, oh, we found this. Here, U.S. government, you take your cut. Spanish government, and for some reason gets their cut, even though they stole it from the Mayans or the Inca or some shit. Like, right? They they, they just raped the whole civilization to steal Lucky that gold. There's no Mayan government left. Right? <laughs> They'd want their cut, too, but fuck them. No Mexico. You get nothing. Um, so they got to let, but in the end, they, they're keeping like 30% of their money. I, I was like... Why the fuck did they not? Who cares if it's a doubloon or whatever? Melt that shit down and go to one of those cash for gold places, right? Like, just just cut all of those people out and keep well, it all Well, definitely don't go to cash for gold. Not you... literally <laughs> cash for gold, but there are markets where you can go and sell <laughs> sell little little bars of gold and shit. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I mean, I just it's baffling to me that they would find doubloons and then go to the government on their own. And say, hey, we want to give you your cut. It's like, no, they, no, they didn't. They, they didn't know those doubloons were there. They weren't searching for Did it. They, get they didn't a cut or fund your expedition. Taxes on the income. The Spanish got a cut. I don't remember yeah. what percentage the U.S. government got or how it was justified, but 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 it was a lot of money that, and, and it, it didn't seem like it was just straight straight up taxes. It's been a while. It, you know, yeah, I yeah. Don't know. If it's straight up taxes, then I'm kind of on board because like I. Living a I life not. of Shit. like tax evasion and you know, like hoping you don't get like there's a lot of like, you don't want that. Oh, the U.S. government will destroy you. 
The U.S. But, go, but, like, but if you find twenty dollars on the ground, you got to report that. Like you found it, well, you didn't earn 20. it. If you find twenty million on the ground, the dude kick the government their eight or something, and then for what? For what? And what? Oh, what you so, get in so, exchange for that are restful, sleepy nights for the rest of your life. That's you not never what I mean. go to prison. No, no, no. See, it, see, Woody's right as far as like the, like I'd rather have three million dollars or four million dollars and know that I'm safe and secure and that uh -huh. nobody's gonna be kicking my door down then have 20 million and be waking up every night sweaty like oh shit are my doubloons safe like i wouldn't i wouldn't <laughs> want to do that the but the point is the point is to kyle's point which i think what you're saying is the fact that you have to pay taxes on buried treasure that you find is an abomination that like that okay. takes that that's a big middle finger to every single person's childhood in the world <laughs> like that you have to, if you find and never did Captain Planet find treasure and go, ah, ha, ha, let's t talk to the government. You know, like, no, you just keep it. <laughs> in, uh, in, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, where I live, Quebec, Canada, if gambling isn't your means of income, like, if you're not, like, a professional poker player, then your uh, winnings, lottery, and whatnot are uh, uh, not taxable. So if in the reverse, in, in Canada, if you find, I'm pretty sure it probably is under the sim, a similar thing that like, uh, you know, you wouldn't get taxed on coming across treasure. And uh, um, yeah. In the U.S., well, you do get taxed. It doesn't also, have to be a primary I, I income. But if you win, sorry, I think if you win even in Vegas and you're from Montreal, uh, I think you can get your taxes back. Like your or Quebec would get a certain amount of it back for you, even if you got taxed, you know, uh, gambling abroad. See, I don't like. The, or wait, I'm you mean curious. Quebec would fund it and and take care of it, or they they would like bother the U.S. Yeah. to make them give the money back. On the uh, in the airport terminal on my way home, it was just like, did you win? Did you win in Vegas? You know, contact a, a Quebec lawyer. You don't have to pay taxes on your winnings. Oh. Nice. Huh. I wonder if, around if Americans go to, you know, Quebec and gamble. Do we have to no. pay taxes there? No. You always, I learned something. You're American, you pay. You always, <laughs> no matter where you go, no matter what you identify as, no matter what country you end up in, you pay. So I, oh, this I, isn't fair. I can't easily Google the Harley like, thing you can, Canada, you can, but in the U.S., if you win $1,200, they report you to the IRS and you'll pay on that. So... There it is. Uh, so anything under twelve hundred is well, good. It, okay, this is an area I happen to know a bit about taxes. Um, if you win a dollar, you're supposed to report that. But at twelve hundred, they make it so the IRS can check on you, and uh, you have to report it. Otherwise, you'll get caught. Man, that's like, and that seems like a really small amount. Doesn't it? To have, I mean, I, I've never gambled. So I, I don't really gamble, cut. so I don't care either way. I but it was going to be 600. 600 is like the 1099 limit. Like if you earn money through you know, independent, mm -hmm. 600. So that's what I expected it to be, but it, I just Googled it. It's, uh, it's 400 in Missouri. Really? If it's Yeah. Yeah, they really need that money, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, $400 goes a long way in Missouri. In certain parts, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I was that's, watching that's Glorious Bastards last night because I, I saw your, your profile picture. Like, I don't know, got me thinking about it. And I watched it. That movie is shit. It, it, let, let me let me rephrase that. The whole Shoshana part of that movie is fucking dog shit. What's the Shoshana should, part? Was... The girl. Every the one bit who of runs the, the theater. Yeah, the the whole oh. part of the with the with the Jewish French girl, or maybe they were in Poland, whoever. Like all of her scenes are worthless. It's it's a movie called Inglorious Bastards, not Shoshana's Revenge. Quentin Tarantino yeah. is so obsessed with film and filmography and and like the nitty gritty film stuff that he 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 devotes two thirds of this movie called Inglorious Bastards to like background information about film stock and how it's flammable and all of this uh, all this stuff about German directors and Jewish directors from the from the forties and, and all of this film stuff and then he even makes a like a faux film within the film like mm -hmm. like he's so obsessed with that crap that he can't get beyond it the cool shit is michael fassbender the british guy coming in doing the german accent the it's it's hugo stiglitz the uh the the the, the nazi who's a turncoat yeah. um it's uh it's donny donowitz the fucking bear jew how much better would that movie have been if you got like double as much of them like, like, don't kill Michael Fassbender off in his second scene, which is literally what they do. And also, use Mike Myers a little bit more. They had so much talent, yeah. 
And I watched it last night, and I was like, no, I'm not going to do do this again. I don't have to. i got a fast-forward button. And I literally fast-forward through every one of her scenes after the first scene with Monsieur La Petite in the, in the, in the farmhouse and everything. And I loved it so much more. It, it cuts it down to, like, I don't You're know, right. 80 minutes. And uh, but, but it's called Inglorious Bastards. Every time Lieutenant Aldo Rain is on screen talking about, and I want my scalps. You're like, fuck yeah, you do. How, didn't you want to see them get a few scalps? How, wouldn't you have loved to have seen them setting up ambushes and like maybe getting a little trouble? And then Hugo Stiglitz comes in with that MG42 and fucking mows down a bunch of Nazis. That's what the we movie only was saw supposed the bear to ju- be. The bear ju- kills one guy with the bat. I, to see the trailer, he was going to be going yad left and right. No, no. And you it, get it, Shoshana uh, hanging out in a, in, a, in a French restaurant waiting on the creme. You get... You get her and her lover plotting her like revenge story. You get that 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 uh, guy who was like the German the hero sniper. and all of his, yeah. You get all of his scenes, which that are was, lame. That part of that movie, the fact that you're talking about it now is bringing it back up to me. That whole sniper and Shoshana thing is so fucking boring and so useless because there's no de- actual development between either of them. It's just he goes from wanting to fuck her to wanting to fuck her, and she goes from not being interested to really not being interested. And then she shoots him eventually. Yeah. Like that, it, you're right. It, that should have been a movie about a bunch of ambushes on Nazis, and there should have been a lot more bat deaths where it wasn't like an honorable, uh, wow, look how tough and disciplined this Nazi is as he sits there stoically on like, like that Nazi died with class, and that was the only guy you got to see getting beat to death with a bat. Like there yeah. should have been ones where people like the Nazis were screaming and he was chasing them down, like, and he throws his pistol down because he'd rather use the bat. You know, and he keeps like that's what I wanted to see more that intense. Movie, that movie was marketed that way. It was marketed as this alternate history where where this this ragtag team of Jewish guys go in guerrilla warfare st- style and get the revenge that, that that we all wish they could have gotten on the fucking Third Reich. You know, Hitler kills himself like a coward, and you know, cy- cyanide and all that stuff, and dies so, somewhat painlessly. It's it's not much of an end for this for this so, torturous so mass murder. So many of his murders. movies are revenge porn. Quentin they, Tarantino's, where it's the, like, oh, this is about revenge on the Nazis, or oh, this is revenge on uh, slave owners. It's like, the more you think about it, it's like, huh, like that, that's a big theme for him, I've noticed. Sorry, Harley. You go I ahead? was going to say, at the uh, at the end of that movie, I, I very specifically remember he does the swastika on the forehead, and then he says, now this is my masterpiece. And yeah. I always felt that was Quentin Tarantino specifically saying that to the audience, uh-huh. that he really cherished this movie a lot. And like I feel like it's it's for him, like it's I do not too. for us in a way. It was kind of like it's his own shit, you know. And he's I like, agree. "This is my masterpiece." I thought it was like his thing. Yeah, I agree with you 100. percent There, there's just so much. Quentin Tarantino loves two things in this world: women's feet and film. <laughs> and 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 the worst parts of the movie are all about that. Like like, do you, 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 if you watch enough of his movies, there's plenty of women's feet close up. Even in Glorious Bastards, there's the scene where. Uh, Hans Landa, the Jew hunter, takes Va- Miss Van Hammerschmark uh, in private to that office, and he's like, put your foot in my lap. And she's like, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> and she puts her foot in the lap, and he slowly, like with his close-up, unbuckles the shoe and takes it off and puts the other slipper on to prove that she's the conspirator. And it's like, yeah, you managed to get a, a woman's foot close-up in every one of your movies. If I yeah, was a female I, actor I, in your movie, I, I'd be like, no. I know those toe people- shoes. <laughs> I I know people that uh, that like have actually like been with him or know him personally and have said that like that's just like a real thing he loves like the uh, foot thing and it's funny that you said like to any female actress she's got to be prepared for that I saw this picture it was like a meme and it was like uh, it was like uh, a kid like looking I forget which one it was but he was like looking at a book and he was so happy and it was glowing on his face and it says like. When white people get a Quentin Tarantino script that has their character saying the N word a lot, <laughs> it's, like, it's like apparently Leonardo DiCaprio had such a hard time saying it around Sam Jackson yeah. that Sam Jackson consistently berated him daily and and enticed him to to say it to like yeah. be Bring comfortable it. saying it. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've heard that as well, and I can understand it. Like it's just flowing the whole time. It's uh, it's about as rough as it gets. Yeah. He has a I love Tarantino, for that word. <laughs> um, but 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 I always thought Inglorious Bastards was gonna be when when I went into the theaters with my dad and watched that shit. I was like, this is gonna be Saving Private Ryan meets Pulp Fiction. 
this is like this is literally going to be the greatest thing there's ever been because I love those two movies. That those are those are two of my fa- favorite movies of all time, and I thought this was going to be them coming together, and it just you know it fell short of that. That's a big. That's really ambitious, though. I didn't even. I thought it was going to be great, but that's like that movie sounds fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Is like imagine like you use gold and like that's it and like you just have a ton of gold and it's like a big deal to you you know and you you manage to find a, a ton of it and uh, eventually someone explains to you that they're gonna take it and hold it and in exchange you get paper but trust us that like this paper is equal to your gold we promise. <laughs> that your gold is equal to this paper and this paper you could use it everywhere trust us like and everyone's part of this everyone yeah. agrees it's good so just put your gold in here we'll hold that and you take this paper here it's then like can I just keep the gold mr Banker? and then eventually it's actually, say, you know what? It, the gold thing's gone it's just paper based now i i would say that it's it's actually similar to someone coming up to you right now and being like yo you know like your bank account forget that what you want is intensely long algorithms. <laughs> algorithms, and that's your money, bro. Like you don't want to have like real money that the government has their fingers in. What you want to do is you want to have these computer codes, and and that's going to be money from now on. And we're all cool with that. Trust me, everyone. Trust me, it's worth four thousand dollars for a Bitcoin. You're good. Trade. Give me four thousand dollars. And I'm gonna give you a chain of characters <laughs> on your computer. No, no, it's cool. Keep it on your USB drive. <laughs> it's sick. Well, I put it on the is... internet. Leave it on the internet. They, when they you put it that hacked. way, when you yeah, put that it that way, like a ruse. it sounds insane. Just as insane as the paper one that he brought up the first time. I, I, like I'm trying to process why it's different, and I'm not coming up with anything. Uh, it's not like, really different. It's, it's really pretty not. Simple. Except there's slightly more benefits within this Bitcoin scenario than with the paper thing. Because in this Bitcoin scenario, it's like, let's take the middleman out. The thing about the Bitcoin, it's untraceable um, like online exchanges. And that's a tricky thing. Now, it, it might be traceable in some tricky like CIA way. I don't know. But- Trade. You can trade Bitcoin hand over fist, though, also. Like, at Woodycraft, we used to accept Bitcoin as payment. I didn't invest in Bitcoin. I would just convert it to dollars every night. But, uh, oh, my God. <laughs> Look, wow. I make a lot of bad decisions. <laughs> if, if, if I was a smarter man, I wouldn't have a broken leg right now. <laughs> so let's just put that aside. But um, uh, the one of the reasons we liked Bitcoin so much is we had a ton of fraud. Right, people would like buy stuff and then the next day claim that we ripped them off or something. And it was just like that. The c- cyber criminals make up a decent part of my customer base, and uh, with Bitcoin, that was never a fear. There is like, there's no concept of like buyer protection or chargeback or whatever. It's it's somehow even less than like dollars. Like it's untraceable. It, meant to be anonymous. We yeah, could just double do check refunds. before you send that, I guess. Like, if they were like, hey, I bought this and it didn't work out and it was at this time, it was ever, we could confirm there was a purchase and it was them. And, but uh, in terms of like robbing us, they couldn't do it. Do you know, as like an aggregate, if you had saved all of the bitcoins or the fractions of bitcoins or whatever that you'd gotten, would it have been significant? Like yeah, a significant number. That's it, not fun to calculate. It, don't no, do that. Have, I mean, we're talking about four digits, like not life changing or anything. Oh, okay. But, yeah. Wait, yeah. Four digits, what? In dollars. A profit, like, yeah. Like, like, like if he, like if he kept the bits instead of uh, transferring them to dollars, he'd have you know eight thousand dollars more to his name or something like that. Something like well, that. That's like, not nearly I, as intense as I, I was mean, imagining. Like, yeah. it's, but percentage it's wise, it's bit, in, it's considerable. In the last five years, it's gone from like like one hundred and fifty bucks to four thousand dollars. So like, do we need? Like if if you had it like five years ago and you were like you know t- and you had like two hundred and fifty bucks of a bitcoin like that two hundred and fifty dollars is worth four thousand now, so like I, I still just don't get it. Like I, I don't understand which what is it outrageous. is and but how it, you get it. It would be from I remember we're not going down that road again. No, we're not we're again because I'm not going to get it. It's, it's not even worth it. You don't it's even want to know. Since you don't even want to know. I, I already know. It's tripled since two thousand fourteen. So. Some, some guy bought a pizza or, uh, online, yeah. I heard, with like a bunch of Bitcoin and that equal like $20 million today or something. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, man. 
But yes, yeah, so I bet he Bitcoin, regrets that pizza. <laughs> not many people had Bitcoin, so we didn't. Most of our sales were in PayPal. That's that's where the. Oh, okay. And of course, there's that guy in the UK who threw away a hard drive with yeah, I many bits one. on it, and like he looked for it for a long time. But every year that passes, it's like maybe we should go look some more. Right? Like, yeah. like maybe maybe we should hire some people to help us those, look. Like those like, gold digging gold mining. Those toothless those toothless gold diggers should be looking for that. But yeah. To me it's like the people who find sunken treasure ships and shit. Like like you know, it's a waste of time to find a ship when gold's at like a hundred. But when gold hits two thousand dollars an ounce or whatever it is, it's fucking Yeah, uh, you know ships ahoy? I don't know. I what remember people say. <laughs> ships ahoy. <laughs> I want to do Tinder talk. I got to piss. I want to do Tinder talk when we come back. I want, I want to talk. I want to see what Harley has to say about Tinder because recently, Harley, I and Chiz introduced Taylor to Tinder. He, he, was, not on, he was not on Tinder. He was not using it. He saw it as, as just a thing for women to get, like, uh, um, how do you put it? Validation. Validation yeah. from men. It, he thought it was like this big, silly game where women were just, like, picking and choosing and sitting on a throne. Now I think he realizes that it's Huge the, the pussy. Huge hypocrite. It's right the here. pussy like uh, slot hypocrite. machine is what it is, and uh, and, and I want to I want to know uh, uh, what what dating apps you use and, and what your experiences are. I, 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 but I'm about to piss on myself. Harley, are you <laughs> are you presently dating anyone? Like where? Yeah, are yeah, oh. but I, I I've had I've had time on the uh, on the app, and I've, I I know my way around it. Ah, okay. Yeah, no, I um I stopped dating about twenty years before Tinder. I don't know <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, I read the funny ones on Reddit. That's my background on Tinder. Um, what are your your big tips? Big <clears throat> tips for it, if you have any. Um. Well, do you have your uh, phone in front of you right now? Uh, no, it's charging in the other room. Oh, it's really far. Oh, that's unfortunate that we. It's can't. really really far. It's really unfortunate that we can't take out your pictures and I can give you a live criticism right now and tell you what you. <laughs> Well, there's no way I'm showing my fucking profile on here. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, Why? It, I wish it, it here's, must be here's more the private thing. than I think. It, this, like, is the, this, is, this is the first thing to understand. Going on Tinder, I've realized, has this aspect where it's like, ooh, motherfucker's got to be desperate if he's trying to fuck a girl inside the telephone. And it's like, <laughs> listen, people are busy. Like I said this, I say this to, to other YouTubers that I know and some of them are like, you know, they're quite famous and they're female and they're like, I will not get caught dead on Tinder. And I'm like, relax, bitch. Like <laughs> you're acting like you can't be seen on Tinder. God forbid someone screenshots you. Like, what are you doing? You're just cutting out the bar. Like if you go out, like we're not, we're not embarrassed to get all dressed up and put gel in our hair and be like, oh, look at you. You think you're going to put gel in your hair and go fuck some girl tonight? You think you're a hot shot or something? Relax, buddy. Like, <laughs> like we, we have no qualms getting dressed up and going out to do that. But we do put Tinder in this box where it's like, you got to be fucking desperate. Even when I see girls being like, oh, look at this DM that I got on Tinder. And some dude's like, oh, damn, baby, why you got to go on Tinder? You must have an easy time meeting guys. And it's like, I don't have fucking time. I just want to get on. And you know what? Do you like my face? You don't. Perfect. I'm glad I didn't have to buy a drink to figure that out. And like you just go on, you figure it out, and you connect. And I was very fast. If you match someone, the longer you wait to meet, the worse that meeting will be. The more of an endeavor and pressure it will be. I used to meet. I used to match. And I would be like, do you want to go grab a taco right now and see if you hate me? Because then we don't need to waste time. And like the biggest thing you could do that waste time is match someone and not meet them. So when you match someone, set aside 45 minutes because truth be told, you're probably not going to fuck someone the first time anyways. So get that one out, make it fast and be like, hey, I have X, Y or Z in two and a half hours from now, meaning I have an hour now. Do you want to get coffee and see if we hate each other and never have to waste time again? Or maybe we could talk. Then you can meet. If it goes exceptionally well, you have a kiss at the end to let her know that you enjoyed it. If she turns you away, handle the rejection like a pro, like a man. See her again. That second time, you've raised the level up so much higher that you are in the realm of being allowed to make a move or get fresh because it's not quite the first date. <laughs> get fresh. Get fresh. Oh, coffee oh that, that's a good name for a podcast. Getting fresh with Harley. <laughs> I would also say that if you're if you look at your picture, since you don't want to bust them out right now, um, w what I would appreciate is if you read to us what your bio says. No. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so let me, let me jump in on this like, topic. It, it, your, when I was buying bio, a house, I said this. I, I was like, hey, I, we, I, I don't even think we put a bid in on it yet. But I'm like, we found a place. It's not that far from me. It's got some acreage. I'm really excited about it. That was what it took for people to like post the Zillow entry on the PKA subreddit and be like, I figured out where Woody's going to go. And uh, I had well, no idea that, that Taylor had any prayer of keeping his Tinder profile private. Well, here, think about this. Tinder is private. The only way you can come across someone's Tinder profile is if you are in within the range of them. But you can set, and they your, are you can set your location. We learned that last week. I can no, say so you can, I'm in you can You can go California and swipe, but like here, here you go, Taylor. This is a perfect example. If you are too bashful or too shy to tell me what your bio says, then you don't stand behind your bio enough to confidently present it to a girl. Yeah, that's a really clever attempt to get me to read it, but it's not a fact of I'm, I'm not confident in the bio. It's that I'm not reading it on, on the podcast. That's but, not but what it's for. Also, it's your bio. It doesn't say what are your sexual preferences. It's your bio. You don't know By that. all accounts and purposes, right. all four <laughs> of us are capable of creating a bio for you right now and we don't need to know anything about you in your brain. But if it was sexual preferences, I understand that's private. But your bio is hardly private. Like, hi, I'm Taylor. I really like St. Louis blues. Like, is that really so outlandish to say right now in this scenario? I only want to help you. It sounds we can to only me step your game like up. Harley should be reading us his Tinder profile. I'll tell I mean, you. And, and, I, and Harley I don't perfectly know anymore, pegged me as you. a very shy, bashful person. You know, here's, obvious. <laughs> here's exactly what my Tinder profile used to say. I'm tall and I have a job. That's exactly what it said. Those were two things that I noticed while swiping were things that came up. If you ain't got a car, if you ain't got a job, all that. Now, I don't agree with the tall thing, and I think it's fucked up, because if I was like, if you got a flat booty, swipe left, that would be <laughs> fucked up. But, like, the whole short, tall thing, girls are apparently allowed to do it, but it's okay, you can't be sexist to men. Um, <laughs> but the whole tall thing, like, I noticed that, so I just said, I'm tall, and I have a job. And That's what that it. was okay. is being concise. The second you say, and I don't know if you do it, but let's just pretend... Hey, I like St. Louis Blues. Wow, hockey freak. You like hockey so much you have to mention it in your fucking Tinder pro. I dated a hockey player once. I want none of him. The less you say, the better. So the what you I if I better. were you, okay. if I were you, I would say uh, I, I, I'm, on a, I'm on a successful podcast. And that's literally it. It's bragging a bit, and it's kind of mysterious. Maybe it opens them up, but they'll be like, oh, he's charming. He's a talker. He knows how to have a good conversation. You could even say, like, I'm on a podcast. I know how to have a good conversation. That's it. You like talking. That's all there is. And if you say successful podcast, they won't question that you're living in your mom's basement talking into an iPhone, calling it a podcast. <laughs> Other pictures, make sure one of them is outside. Because otherwise it looks like you're a homebody and you never want to go out. Another one of your pictures, absolutely 100% smile with teeth. If you don't have a single smiling picture, that's a problem. If you do have a smiling picture but none of them with teeth, then you have no teeth. That's what they will think. <laughs> that's literally how it goes. You have to show your teeth or you have no that, teeth. That, that outside and teeth one, that's excellent. excellent. No, I, I disagree. Smiling is a sign of submission in primates. I never smile. <laughs> well, Harley, don't, don't, he, Taylor, he has his whole, whole other batch of rules. Taylor's I a clever guy, right? I believe Taylor could come up with a Tinder profile that would be memorable, more memorable than the ones you're coming up with, right? He could say something that would make a girl be like, <laughs> I, you know, I, I adore him. You think that's a bad strategy? I think that you will hurt yourself more than you will help yourself. I believe in this introductory process, the girls will write a lot as a guy, if you write too much, it will bother them. Girls write with emojis a lot. If you emoji with them back a lot, they don't like that. They're not looking for a girlfriend. They don't want to be like, they, they value mystery. Why do you think Tuxedo Mask got all the sailors fucking wet? Because they didn't know who was behind the mask and in the tuxedo. Sailor Moon reference. 
I yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't get that one. So the girls is, value resources and important. strength, right? The guys value like you know fertility and 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 pretty, and and guy and girls want resources and strength, which is why it's so nice to be a guy because we die old and and we die we get stronger and we gather more resources. Where so we're born poor and we get rich, whereas women are born rich and get poor. Their you know, their fertility and their uh, their prettiness it just fades. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Why not have a Tinder profile that somehow accentuates your resources and your strength? I guess that's but what like, you did. But, I'm processing but, but, this. But, yeah. I'm uh, tall uh, and I a have picture. a job. You basically said, I have resources and strength in your Tinder yeah. profile. It's, it's <laughs> concise. It's got to be so concise. The second, imagine if I said this, um, I have a popular cooking show. Well, now that means I have an ego, I'm famous, and there's going to be other girls that are trying to fuck me too. So like I've given three problems. Now girls aren't us. We look we look at a girl and 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 she can she can have something and we're guys we'll be like damn that ass though. Like she could be like I have a uh, I have a uh, 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 seizures every 20 minutes and I violently swear out loud and uh, sometimes I'll randomly punch the person I'm with in the face. We would look at it and be like, damn, those tits are nice, and I bet her punch isn't that hard. I'm going to yeah. take a shot at it. <laughs> girls, for every girl on Tinder, every time they swipe right, it's a match. They match when they say heart. They will match. So because of that, the whole thing is entirely skewed to the point that you can say too much and damage yourself. You're better off just being like, if they like your face, they like your face. Nothing you say will change their mind. But if they like your face, they like your face. Say one sentence, and hopefully you didn't fuck it up. That's interesting. I like the the uber concise thing. The to be fair, the fact that you're like six five or something makes the tall thing easy. I'm six foot, and so I'm taller than most men. Okay, not... so put okay, put six one. But I already get irritated by all the five ten, five eleven liars who that. say they're six foot. I don't want to be that guy. Ooh, who these, these cool. girls that, are these girls that's that do that? by right there i'm not one of those 5 10 5 11 liars six foot i've said that in that, a message no, to a girl right. and, and she laughed that's yeah that's the bio be like i'm six one and a real six one not oh, like these five eleven liars you need someone next to you with a with a tape measurement oh or, or, or like coming out of a convenience store you know with the with the thing or whatever like, like, or or <laughs> like in a seven eleven. <laughs> Hold a banana or put a banana next, next to you. Be like that that thing. Thing. Here's a banana for size reference. Mm. Or like just like, you know, like something next to you like that. But I, I like that angle okay. personally. Okay. Here's That's interesting. Fun. I like that. Here's something fun. Okay. Go grab your phone. You won't say anything. You won't show us anything. But let's go speak. Let's go respond to one of your messages together right now. You don't need to say anything. Just need to say what was the last thing they said, and I'm going to set you up real nice with a solid fucking line. You're going to end up marrying this chick, and she's going to discover this podcast. And, and she'll love it. Her, it'll she's be, gonna it'll, it'll play at the shit. wedding. That's I'll, it. She's going to use the wedding. I'll come MC it. In the divorce proceedings. <laughs> I think it's, 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 you know what? Like, <laughs> it's, it, if you look, you know what? Not not this time, Taylor. What you do, go go check out, and this is great because I get to plug my thing real quick, youtube.com slash Harley Moore. If you go look up my Tinder videos, I have some with my friend Amir, and I fully respond on his account and change up some things. Like for him, he showed me what he wrote. It said it, it like he matched this girl, and he wrote peekaboo. Yeah. That was his opening line. Why? I saw him like, dog, you need so much fucking help right now. I <laughs> Okay. I'm like God peekaboo. Damn. That's what you led with. You you look like you're trying to fucking kidnap her kids. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> like like, like right. what's she supposed to say? I see you. Like like where's like, like going? Peekaboo. There's no response to that. What does she it say? Also sounds T- like yeah, if I opened up a Tinder match and they said peekaboo, I would be like, they're here. <laughs> All right, so Master of None. It's yeah, a Netflix special. Good. That guy from Parks and Rec, Azir, is our Aziz Ansari. Thank you. Um, he's in it, and they, they use Tinder in the show. His opening line, he uses it all season long, is, hey, I'm going to Whole Foods. You need anything you like? It, it, it's good, but it's, it's, it's really specific to a location. Okay. That's, I don't want to offer to buy someone anything. No, no, but that's, 
but that's that's really specific to Los Angeles. No, he lives in Los Foods? Angeles. Isn't he in Los Angeles there? He is, but Whole Foods is nationwide. Is that no? But like Whole Foods in LA has like a really intense culture to it. Oh, like there's okay. like you go there, you can grab like a fucking drink and like an Amazon Echo and like your groceries and people are chilling and it's like it's like a it's like hot girls go there. It's like I actually like a- I, I shop at Whole Foods more often now because after the first time I went there, I was like, oh, my God, like this is a different group of women than I'm seeing at Walmart. Dude, yeah, you like- got to swipe. <laughs> you have to yeah. stand there and swipe there. You have to swipe in Whole Foods. Ooh, how interesting. You go there to swipe. No, no, the high school. Oh, here's what another tip. This, here's, here's one that uh, that actu- an actual Tinder tip that uh, that a fan sent me that panned out great. So you know how you can set the distance to it? Okay. If you like just want to skip through the bullshit and just find the people who have already matched you, if you set your range to one mile and then go back and keep that as your setting and then go to, to the tindering and it'll like say searching for people around you, it'll show people that are way more than a mile away, but it'll only show people who have already swiped on you. So if you're like, oh fuck, like there's four more girls, bang, 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 like they all matched with you already. And so there's a there's a pro that tip is interesting. that a nice guy on the Reddit. Harley, how me. low do you set the age on yours? Bottom to top. So Same here. Like, so 18 years old and up. Bottom to top because like even some people have their a glitch on their Facebook and the age is messed up. Uh, but I'll tell you one thing. You want to hear an advanced move? Yeah. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll love to hear it. Even I do. Okay, now we're getting really <laughs> advanced though. If you really want to get advanced, if you really want to care about this stuff, you want to make moves. <clears throat> do you go to a gym? Uh, I work out. I don't go to a gym. You what? He works out. I home. work out I, at home. I don't. Go oh, to at gym. home. Um, do you go to? Uh, do you go to a restaurant with cute waitresses, or do you frequent a place often where you come across cute girls? Yeah, the park. Like the park. Okay. Go to Instagram and search up places. And then look at the pictures tagged in those places, especially like if you go to a gym, girls that work at the gym tend to take selfies at the gym and tag the gym. Girls that uh, – or if you if you go to like a, a, a shoe store or something and you notice like there's a couple cute employees, you can look up that place on places on Instagram and find the employees. They take pictures of themselves and they geotag the location. Now – it, it could be considered stalking, except this is public and they geotagged it to the extent that they want it to be seen. Mm-hmm. So it's not quite like harassing someone, but if they put themselves in a place and they tag the location, I think it's free game to then slide in the DM and be like, I notice you go to my gym. Or, hey, I saw you the other day. I was getting shoes. Um, what's interesting is if you start to look up places and you look at their Instagram profiles, if you have friends in common, the cookies from that will pass onto your Facebook and they might pop up in your suggested friends in the Facebook realm, at which point you could add them on Facebook and be like, oh, I've been in your shoe store before. Facebook recommended we be friends. How weird. I guess uh, this advanced Facebook algorithm says we're perfect for each other. That's at- very, very you know, you won me over. I was thinking it was really creepy, but then you said they're geotargeting it. They're doing it. So uh, you're just using the information available to you. So that's not exactly. creepy. Yeah. Okay. I'm sold on that. I'm going to do that. I'll make an Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a Facebook too now, though. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, I'll make another if Facebook. You, <laughs> yeah. If you take a girl, any girl you go to see on, Inst- on Tinder, if you set up the date through Tinder within the app, you pay. I mean, I. you mean like I pay for the whole thing? Yeah, wherever you go, whatever you do, you pay. I mean, I always do that. Okay. Like, I, I feel more comfortable paying. I'm not, But I'm not one of those guys who, like, if she says, no, no, I'll pay for my half, I'm not going to be like, oh, I insist. It's going to be like, all right. Like, I'm not going to let you call my bluff and then expect me to go, no, 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 I, I do it again. It's like, no, it, this isn't a I insist, a, no, 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 me. Like, no, if you say you're going to pay for half of it, you got the one shot, and I'm going to respect your decision. You're paying for your I, half. Yo, first, you got that, okay. I'll be like, let me get this. And then she goes, no, I insist. I will say, no, absolutely not. And then if she insists again, to insist. First insist is a test. The second insist is the real one. I don't want to be fucked with. 
We're texting. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're trying. You're trying to be fucked with. You downloaded this app with the sole intent of literally being fucked with, fucked on, but fucked not all up and way. down. You will commit to the fuckery, okay? <laughs> look you will be fucked game. with, and if all goes according to plan, you will get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you, you. That's true. You did sign up to get fucked with and to fuck. So, yeah. all right, all right. I'll add an additional no to my repertoire. I'll now take two no's, yeah. and then the third, you do it. Okay. Exactly. exactly. Solid tip. Solid tip. Exactly. <laughs> this, exactly. These are, these are great I'm lessons. Just saying, I'm just saying this. The girl that takes it, maybe that's not the one who you want to be or have a partnering with or whatever down the line. But the girl that that pays for her own coffee isn't going to suck your dick. Maybe. No. I mean that's just kind of a giant sweeping thing. It is, and let's just let's just like I mean let's pray for the best and expect the worst, and let's just <laughs> assume she, we're gonna lean on the side that she's not gonna suck your dick if she had to buy you the coffee. Let's just oh well she's that. not buying me the coffee. If we no. operate on that, if we operate on that, it's just a safe way to roll. Just just to say, and I'm not saying everyone would be like that, but I'm just saying like. If she bought her own coffee, it might be harder for me to get like uh, a hand job or whatever you want. You know? I mean, that's 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 definitely fair. I and I would do the same thing with coffee. I'd say I'll take care of this, and then if they say no, I got my I got my coffee. I say okay. Like, but now I, I, I know I'm supposed to take another no, like a fucking car and, salesman. If, you know? she insists, <laughs> if she insists again, be like, fine, you could pay for your coffee, but you're still gonna lick my butt, right? <laughs> so so escalate quickly, right? That's what you're saying. What, should I do that, that while I'm still in line? I'm kidding <laughs> about that part. Oh, also, I've done this. This is very stalkery. I see someone on Tinder and it doesn't go well. Hmm. No match. So sometimes they have their Instagram tagged. Yep. Send them a DM on Instagram being like, so weird. I swiped you right on Instagram on Tinder and we didn't match. I think it's oh. a malfunction. In the algorithm or something, some sort of glitch. Because um, I doubt actually, I think there's a malfunction in your algorithm. You are stalking <laughs> the fuck out of me right now. I am reporting you to Tinder. Like no, <laughs> yeah, okay, Kyle. It's, or, uh, hey, Kyle. Once Har again, Harvey, she Har she put her Instagram there because she's using it to see to to get you know people to go look at her Instagram. If you slide in there and like, it's true. Maybe you do have more followers than her. Maybe she cherishes that. You slide in and you say something like. Oh, I, I swiped you right, but we didn't match, which is weird because, I mean, I don't think you would swipe left on a handsome guy like me, blah, blah, blah. I'm so funny. She'll be like, oh, this guy is kind of cute. Now that I'm looking at 50 pictures of him instead of the three ugly ones he chose, this <laughs> is a chance. It's just a second chance. If we framed getting Instagram followers as a way to help Taylor get laid, I'm pretty sure he'd be at like 25,000 after one episode. Oh, my God. This is a good idea. <laughs> I need to start. Okay, I'm going to make an Instagram. Guys, next week I'll come guys, back and give it out. People listening, if you follow him and you get him into the 10K plus, his efforts at getting a girl on Tinder goes up way more and it will lead to uh, much more interesting podcasts in the future. Mm. And he'll and he'll be happy to share his bio with us and stuff. So go check out it. Go, go look at his Instagram that he's going to make. Taylor's yeah, going to upload his first video in like a the, year. Uh, Follow me on that's, Instagram. Yeah, that's, that's all that it'll be. I have made a video in so long. <laughs> yeah, that's the move that Dan, Bil Dan Bilzerian does. His Instagram is fucking off the chain. Of course, he's got well over a million, probably well you got to be like, oh, wow, uh, uh, like uh, I don't use this app a lot at all. I'm going to delete it. We should swap numbers. Here's my number. Send me a message. Because then it's like I'm not living on Tinder and I don't stay on Tinder all the time. I hate this app. And then you can get off and it encourages her to get off the app as well. And then she won't be spying on you as much as I guess if you're you know, still popping around there or whatnot. But okay, getting, that's a good app, getting off the app the way is, it's important. Uh, I could tell you another really crazy move. Go, I'm, I'm loving it. Keep, keep them coming. Okay. Where do you live? St. Louis. St. Louis. Um, what you do is you find, you change your Tinder to swipe in Canada. Okay. You could swipe Montreal, for example. Swipe in Canada and... You, first of all, you'll see how beautiful Montreal girls are. We have very beautiful girls here. You'll see that firsthand. I don't know if I gave you guys the history lesson of it, of why. You did, actually. Yeah. You, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you swipe there and match a girl and uh, and bring her down for the weekend. 
It's getting expensive, but like, like that's... pay for a plane ticket for some random yeah, bitch. See, from I, I, Canada. Saying, like, I don't want to be saying, telling tales. There are too school. many women. There are millions of women in St. Louis that I can fuck. Like I'm saying, is... I'm saying. I hope you have an aeroplane set up and you've been collecting points. Fly <laughs> that pussy in on points, and lock it down. And I'm well, just that saying, bitch like, is flying it's, southwest. It's, it's, it's fun when she's around the corner. It's fun when she's around the corner. But like, if if you're looking at like eights or eight and a halfs, if you're putting like this this trip into it, it's almost like a little long weekend vacation. I mean, you might be able to hit a nine and a half, ten, because she's getting a trip out of it too. Oh, I got the I got the trick. Forget. I believe you about the women in Montreal. Don't get me wrong. Right now, you need to strike while the motherfucking iron is hot. Hmm. Put that shit on Miami. I knew you were going to say that. Put that that shit on Miami. Be be like, get away from the storm and come see a storm lord. And like, 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 (laughs) like, like, sing dressed as Robert Baratheon, who's the storm lord, and fucking kill it. Fucking kill it all day. Those flights are capped off at $99 from JetBlue. That's probably like 30 points. Oh, this is actually a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Okay, all right. I'm going to set my location at a refugee center just outside of Miami, right? <laughs> and then I'm going to swipe there. There's a, there, I'll, I'll let them shower first. I have a light. girlfriend. I go have great. to say, she, my door's open, and she's been hearing me yell about Tinder this entire time and all these strategies. I need to say, I'm not on it. I'm not on Tinder. This was once upon a time. This is something that has happened before. This is Andy. This is my girlfriend. No, we we swipe right and left together. Actually, There's yeah, a, it's like okay. a duo, duo. Yeah, yeah. It's a swipe right. You get both of us. Exactly. <laughs> I've seen those accounts, and it's annoying when it's like uh, the the chick on there, and then you get like five pictures in, and then it's her and some dude, and you scroll down to the bio that you didn't read because you saw on the top level that she likes ice cream and is an adventurer, just like fucking every other chick in there. And you, you scroll to the bottom, and it's like, looking for someone else with my, you know, to have fun with my boyfriend with. He's bi. And it's like, ah, like, are you really duping people with this? Like, are people showing up? And then there's just fucking Ian in the corner. <laughs> and, you're like, like, and he's like, well, I'm already right. drove out here. Like, like no, <laughs> how is that going to work? You, you, like just make it up front. Ah, yeah, I, I don't like that. And I do. Like, did you notice that you smirked when I said the adventurous thing, Harley? Yeah. Have you noticed every single girl is adventurous? Well, on those if, apps, if, I think it's you, because they want an adventurous guy, and so they think that the the prospect of adventure is as endearing to us as it is to them. Adventurous? No, adventurous is a way of saying I don't want to suck your dick on your couch. Hmm. Adventurous you means I'm not going to a movie. You're not coming to watch a movie here. I'm not going to watch one there. Adventurous means get the fuck up and get the fuck out. It the, means like. No Netflix and chill. If a girl says, like, I like staying in and watching a movie, every guy's like, I got a lot of movies for you at my house, baby. <laughs> Netflix, ever heard of it? Non-stop movies. I got Lord <laughs> of the Rings on my couch. Extended edition. Yeah, we, we, you're, about, you're in for 12 hours of fun. <laughs> <laughs> she keeps trying to, like, put her hand in your lap. She's trying to put her hand in your lap. You're like, no, no, you're going to miss it. These are the Lees of Lothlorien. This is important. <laughs> this is extended shit right here. Come on. Stop. Not you, you probably didn't see the scene where Saruman falls off of the Tower of Orthanc. <laughs> oh, stop. Get your hand out of my pants. Get out. You know what? Get, I don't need you for this. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah, the man of Rohan. It's all this to say. I'm, those are those are mm-hmm. some some very interesting tips and some very good ones. I'll I'll reevaluate, think about that. But it's as a whole, like I have Tinder in my mind now. Like I said, I was the biggest hypocrite. I'm like, ah, oh, this is a way for fucking women to get validation. And then immediately when I got it, I'm sitting there like getting validation, and I'm like, huh, yeah, right, as if like, like that. <laughs> and like, but the you first know what? Time I did it. I didn't know how it worked that well, and so I just like swiped right until it said you're out of swipes. I'm like, all right, let's see what reels in. And then like as more of them come in, you're like, no, 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 yes, yes, no, or whatever. And then. Uh, someone told me on the PKA Reddit that it rewards you for for declining more often to show that you're not like, or that you're like I, I don't I don't you're understand. Not, it's because spam bots spam bots auto auto oh. accept everyone. Then yeah, that's so probably if it. you're if you decline someone who has a high rate of getting declined, then you're likely a human with the ability to differentiate, and so 
they benefit you for that because they don't think you're a bot. I mean, you could also try and get onto Raya. Are you Is aware? Raya an app? It's uh, it's uh, the number like the number one rule is you don't talk about it, and it's uh, it's Tinder for the uh, for the rich, famous, beautiful, and exclusively selected. And I say this because I have no I idea. <laughs> I have no idea what gets you on or not, but like. Like you apply to it, and all of the girls are uh, are curated manually by people that have selected like the best of the best or famous people. Um, I'm not allowed to actually say who I see on it, but uh, I did see f literally famous girls from movies of like the past year, and you could swipe, and if you screenshot on the app. It says right away, it says, like, one more screenshot and you're kicked off the app. And, so you uh, get one freebie. Yeah, you get one accidental <laughs> one, to be honest with you. Isn't it? <laughs> and uh, that is one that you should R-A-Y-A and uh, try and download it. And, uh, it. and, I mean, if that one works, it's like, dude, she's, she's flying you on points. <laughs> I mean, that would be. Like, she's sending you on a trip. Wow. Yeah, but what is, what is looking a woman like a look a like here. who like, is who is sending me wonderful. on a trip? It's gonna be some like you know maybe a seventy two year old in Montreal who owns a you no, know, she's, few boots. She's not a, she's not on Raya. No, but she, she would be because Carly just said that it's for super rich famous people, and so if she was super rich, it would rich, be like you're talking about someone from the Golden Girls, and at yeah, that Betty point White's get on the plane on and lick that pussy. If Sorry. Betty White asked, I would do it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story for the rest of your life. <laughs> Hooking up with, with Betty White? I, I'd uh -huh. fuck Betty White. Yeah. Yeah, I would too. Or the rest of hers, like, which is like six months. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nah, she'll keep going. Yeah. <laughs> she'll, <surely>. Hopefully. <laughs> she looks Man, that's really interesting. Rhea. It's almost like, a, almost seems conspiratorial the way you described it. Like, oh, does it really exist? No one knows. Like, yeah, that's interesting. And you've had, uh, you've had good luck with that one? Um, it's the, the people that I matched have like very prestigious jobs. I am obviously not on it anymore, but what you can do is you could change it also in this app to collabos. Like, I mean, not to collabos to like willing to work together rather than like have the heart. It's like a check mark. So it's like a business type thing too. Oh, that's um, cool. And what's really useful is everyone on Rhea in St. Louis when you look at the map of it on Rhea, it has a burn map of where are the most people that have Rhea tonight, which location. And it has either blue if it's bumping and pink if it's really bumping. So when you go on in like if you were like on it in L.A., for example, or New York, you would literally see where are the clubs that the richest most famous people are at frequenting because the app tells you from the geotag where they are so you can kind of usefully see like what are the new up and coming spots before they become mainstream you know mm -hmm. what i mean because you see yeah. the 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 upper echelon of like what is basically it's all douchey the whole thing is very like it's got a douchey vibe to it i'm sure it's not intentional but you know like to sit here and be like the exclusive app it has a douchiness to it you know but but I like I'm just saying I sound like a douche saying mainstream like people if you're just listening I'm doing finger quotes and shit while I talk. Um, this is uh, it's something that like you could you could see like the the, the spots like the new spots you know what I mean. Uh, but I mean yeah like people that I saw in it were people from TV shows and people from movies and uh, yeah yeah but was, this sounds like something that I have no chance of being accepted to. I'm not famous. I'm not a millionaire. Like it's all it takes. Is like, for example, I got onto well, on the it. Internet, you can be both of those things. But oh, I, I can lie. You're right. But my, friend, sure. yes. my friend, my friend, as fucking you know, yes. My friend has five million Instagram followers, which is basically like ten times more than me. And uh, she's like all like a model and stuff, and she didn't get accepted. And like I did, I assume at the end of the day, someone might just like the cut of your jib and accept you. So you just should take the shot. 
because by all intents and purposes, she is like 10 times more famous than me. But maybe someone just liked the cut of my jip or they were like, oh, it's that baking guy or something, you know, like you never know. You never know. Who Play the up the Monsieur Lapidite like you may have seen me in Inglorious Bastards. I was hiding Jews under the floorboard in the first scene. Uh, myself and Christoph Waltz had a lot of chemistry. I'm sure you picked up on it. Like yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll, I'll lie about who I am and, and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs>